السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لسان يفقه قولي أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم جنات أدني يدخلونها ومن صلها من آبائهم من آبائهم وأزواجهم ودرياتهم والملائكة يدخلون عليهم من كل باب سلام عليكم بما صبرتم فنيم أكب الدار So the first uh, You know, we just pray Isha and look like we are in Haram. The same Sheikh Sudes. <laughs> so I mentioned after Fajr how I did meet Sheikh Abdul Majid. I was praying uh, Taraweeh in Haram, Mecca. Then I'm going back to, Indo- to America. So I pray Fajr in Masjid in the airport. the old airport. And then the one who led the Salat was Sheikh Shurem. I said, how come Shurem is away and then he, you know, right? So after finish, I went to shake his hand and they was found him. <laughs> I said, come, right? As we know that when we eat biryani every day, you're bo- boring, right? So the same, you know. So Sheikh Abdul Majid, inshallah, you can, one day you can mahir, Shurem, so different, The situation, inshallah. This is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second, my name is Muhammad Joban. I am originally from Indonesia, but my grand-grandfather is from Yemen, from Hadarmut. I just eat a restaurant called Hadarmut. It's good food, mashallah. <laughs> so what happened in 1930, 1940, this man by name Al-Habib Muhammad Al-Idrus, he used to go to Indonesia and build a masjid. After he built two, three masjid, he went back to Hadormu, to Yemen, and he brought the imam. He always uh, brought imam, make sure they are single. So they will marry with Indonesian sister. We not go back to her. And among them, my grand-grandfather, Awad bin Sa'id Joba, subhanAllah. So he built, he said, almost maybe 90 masjid in different cities. He's very smart. You know, the Quran said, وَنَكْتُبُ مَا قَدَّمُوا وَآثَارَهُمْ Allah said, I record what you send to me. Every day, like you send an email to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But maybe that recording, good deed that you send, is not enough to bring to Jannah. وَآثَارَ What you left behind. They continue after you die. That's the smart one. So imagine this man, Muhammad Idrus, The masjid now still exists in Indonesia. And the imam have children and grand-grandchildren. One of them, I am, I am his grand, grandchildren of them. Imagine that reward, they continue to his grave, subhanAllah. Right, and he died in Indonesia, city Surabaya. He didn't have even house, yeah? So today, our subject is how to be together in this dunya, in the akhirat. You know, sometimes every Eid you have, what? Reunion, family, right? But sometimes one of your sons couldn't come because of job, he's in New York, but next week he'll come. But over there, if one of your family is not there, where? Right? Yeah. So therefore, in Surah Al-Ru'ad, Ayat 23, Ayat 23, he said, Jannatu adniyan khulunaha. This Jannah Adan, who will enter that? Man wa man solaha min abaihim. Right? The righteous among their parents. The condition what? Solaha. Right? Wa azwajihim. And then what? Your wife or the husband. I asked the, the, the brothers here, would you like to meet again with your wife? Because some brothers say, oh man, it's enough here. <laughs> But look, your wife will become prettiest than all the women in Jannah. 
So when you are surrounded by a Horeen, suddenly a woman will come. And he said, who's that? The tallest one, the prettiest one. That's your wife. Fatima, it is you. <laughs> SubhanAllah. And sister, your husband also, in Jannah, will become more handsome than you, SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. So brothers, if your wife not like before, you know, be patient. She'll become prettiest than you. And sister also the same. <laughs> Even your, your, your husband bald head, no, over there, mashallah, <laughs> like Yusuf, alayhi salam. That's it, no. And then what? Your family, your progeny, Allah. Maybe you died and your son not married yet. And then you see, son, who's dead? That's your grandchildren, son. Great, great children. Allah. Thank you, thank you, you, you brought us to, to Dallas. And you teach us to bring us to the masjid, we are here now. Right? Imagine if not here, they will blame you that you brought to Dallas, but you don't care about me. Yeah? So, now, in another ayah, in Surah uh, Tur, right? they will going to gain, to gain have what you call reunion. So in Jannah, we'll ask another, you know, Nasim, you're here, mashallah. How did you get here? Right? Omar, how did you get here? We'll ask another. Most of the answers said, Olu inna kunna fi ahlina mushfiqeen. We are here today because you wish to be worried about our family. Ekram the Fajr. Bring him to Halaqa Quran. So if you worry about your family here, you'll be safe over there. Right? Yeah. And the first step to have to be together, if you have to have, you have to have a good family, peaceful family. Yeah, the best gift you can give to the children, what? Peaceful family. I work as Muslim chaplain in prison. 80% of the inmates, they become criminal because of what? The broken home. There's no peace at home. Right? So in Islam, marriage is ibadah. It is the, 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 the longest ibadah. How long did we pray? Seven minutes. How long we fast? 14, 15 hours, right? Hajj, five days. But marriage, how long been married, Sazim? 24, I am 35, so I still doing ibadah. <laughs> right? In the Quran also, they call, وَأَخَذْنَ مِنْكُمْ مِثَاقًا غَلِيدًا Mary is mithak. Mithak means the agreement that be, uh, between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah used the word mithak always when Allah have agreement with you. وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِثَاقَ النَّبِينَ Mithaq of Bani Israel. So Allah used also the same for Mary with Mithaq. So that means if you break down, you're not break down between you and your wife, but with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And then in Surah Rum, Allah described, you know, how to be supposed to relationship with husband and wife. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا among the ayat. So, I mean, marriage is ayat. Right? You know, ayat kursi, right? You know, how do we treat ayat kursi? With respect and honor. So, your wife is ayat. Your husband is ayat. That means what? You have to treat one another with respect and honor. And then he said, azwajan. You know, azwajan mean pair. You know, like, like shoe pair. It means man and woman is not the same. Right? So after marriage, you know, oh man, not the same. Like, do, would like to wearing shoes all right? No. But they are different, but they almost what? They go to the same destination. Right? They need one another. If one of your shoes is need to be repaired, the other shoe just wait, right? Did you hear somebody go to the, the shoes, the store? I just want need one pair of shoes, no. Right? 
Yeah. What is the goal of Mary? Litaskunu ilaiha to find sakina. Sakina mean what? Happiness, tranquility, right? But he said litaskunu ilaiha. He didn't say maha. He didn't say to find sakina with her. It mean this sakina is not come automatically. So both have to work hard. It means husband have to have dream how to make my wife happy. The wife the same how to make my husband happy. And for that you need two things. Wajala bayna kum mawadda wa rahma, and he made between you mawadda and rahma. What's mawadda mean? Love. But mawadda is not only love. Mawadda that mean after Mary you have to accept as she is. She has to accept as he is. Because sometimes, before Mary had a lot of expectation, right? You know, do you know Indian movie? In an Indian movie, right? In Indian movie, when the husband come home, the wife what? Singing and dancing. So what happened after Mary, your wife didn't, didn't dance for you. Mawadda, you accept. <laughs> That's the meaning. So before Mary, don't put too much expectation. Before Mary, you think your wife didn't talk a lot. After Mary, oh man, she talk a lot. What do you have to do? Mawadda. <laughs> That's the meaning. So therefore, why after Mawadda what? Rahma. Because love will, 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 will take how long? You know, you know honeymoon? How long honeymoon we talk? Six months. You have experience, man. So Shahrul Asal. After six months, Shahrul Basal. Onion moon. <laughs> so therefore, when, when Mawadda down, bring what? Rahmah. A man came to Umar bin Khattab. Amir al I would like to divorce my wife. I said, why? I didn't love her anymore. Ya akhi, marry on, only based on divorce, uh, marry based on love. Everybody finish now. So fine, Rahmah. Where is Rahmah? Right? In another ayah, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Hunna libasun lakum wa antum libasun lahun. Your wife like a garment for you, and you like what? A garment for your wife. It's so beautiful. You know this, this uh, uh, British woman, you know, she became Muslim because of this ayah. In this, this verse, you know, or this sentence, right? Allah was put Where is it? When Allah talk about what? Ramadan. Allah talk about Ramadan and Allah would look like said, this is the best time to be together again. Right? Your wife like a girlman. You know what's what the function of girlman? To cover up. Right? Because you don't want somebody to see them. So after Mary had to cover up your wife's shortcoming. The same with the wife. So after Mary, so if your parent asked you about your wife, said, oh, She's the best woman in the world. She also the same. She's, he's the best husband in the world. You can lie and marry. <laughs> so it means what going on at home has to be sacred. No text for them. Even, even to your family. Don't tell. Because you know sometimes a wife call her, her mother, complain about her husband. Of course she's far away. But husband wife already, already re reconciled. But the mother is still suffering. Oh man. Yeah? So don't let them suffer. Just keep sleep. What another fu another function of clothes? Al wikoya, protection. So you have to protect your wife's dignity and honor, the same with the wife. It also means after Mary, you have to be careful what you're going to post in Instagram, in Facebook. You don't like before. <laughs> you know, so a sister came to me. Sheikh, my husband. So what happened? The husband have a picture, you know, in Facebook. Her, his friend, long time ago in high school, <laughs> and he saw. I said, "Who's this?" <laughs> right? You have to be careful. Another function of close what Al Jamal beautification. So the husband have to show his beauty, physically, spiritually, for his wife. The same what with the wife. I always, in khutbah nikah, he said, if you want to make your wife happy, she need triple A's. 
attention, appreciation, and affection. Remember that. Attention and affection. Attention, that means you have to have time with your wife. You know, sometimes men, after honeymoon, say, I am busy. Mashgul. Right? Who's the busiest one in the world? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's a prophet, he's the leader, he's a teacher, but he always have time for his wife. Prophet, when he come home, always smiling. Did you? Hi, honey. Smiling. Dohaka means try to find like a job to make your wife happy, loving. So you can Google, try to find it. Right? I will share with you. You know, there's an Indonesian couple during hard time. And after Mina, so he had very tired headache. You know, after Fajr, he went to the cafe. He need very hot coffee, hot. But he cannot say what in Arabic hot. Go give me two coffee. Hey. <laughs> so the Arab said, Ruh, Ruh. You know. But Indonesian familiar with, with, with the, the Quranic word. I said, give me two coffee Jahannam. <laughs> he said, Khalas, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> There's no hotter than Jahannam. <laughs> yeah. See, you're loving, right? So tell a story to your wife. <laughs> right? Because Rasulullah was I said, Ma ahabul a'mar illallah. What is the most beloved deed to Allah? What? To make, to make somebody else happy. Allah. In another hadith said, if you make your children happy, your wife happy, your parents happy, Allah will create an angel. And the angel is going to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the reward will give to you. So when you die, you know, when they start washing your body, they will be there. You are in the grave, will be there. They said, who are you? I am the happiness that you give to the others. This hadith story. Yeah. So, and also when your wife talks to you, that means it, you are in the phone, turn off the phone. Turn off the phone. Yes. He said, Aisha said sometime, Rasulullah, when I come home, Aisha talked for about one hour. Rasulullah said, yes, yes. What happened when your wife talked one hour after I come back from work? <laughs> right? So he said, khairukum, khairukum, bi ahli Allah. The best among you, when the best to your wife. Right? What second one? Appreciation. People love to be acknowledged. Aisha said, Rasulullah always says something. Right? When your wife cooks something, especially in Ramadan, say something. I always, before we eat, I ask my, I have twins, you know, to, to say, mom, thank you. Because sometimes we just eat, and then, you know, people know, thank you. Right? Mommy, thank you. I can see the tears, so happy. So all the tiredness is gone, right? Right. In the hadith said, the one who not thank to the people, not thank to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Even if the food needs something, for example, cook biryani, needs spices or needs something, you don't say to your, you need, said, honey, you know this food, demand with the food of Jannah. But if you put salt, Little bit become Jannah to Firdaus. <laughs> She's happy, right? <laughs> Subhanallah. Yeah. And the last one is affection. Affection mean woman is not like men. You know, my wife never said, I love you. I, we are okay, right? But woman, no. Woman may want to make sure that, you know, you still love her. So therefore, Rasulullah Sallam always said to Aisha, say something. Right? And also affection means the way you call your wife. You know, Aisha said, Ya Rasulullah, I know if you get angry at me. I said, how? You call me Aisha. If not, you call me Ya Humayro. Ya Aish. That's her nickname. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he loved Muhammad. He never said Ya Muhammad, right? He said Ya Adam, Ya Nuh, Ya Ibrahim. When it comes to Muhammad, what? Ya Yuhal Muzammir, Ya Yuhal Mudathir. Some people say, get toha, ya seen. So the same. And then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Aisha, I know too if you get angry at me. I said, how? The way you make dua. 
If you're not angry, Allahumma ya Rabba Muhammad. If you're angry, Allahumma ya Rabba Ibrahim. Allah. <laughs> right? American, they are good. How American call his wife? Honey, sweetheart. Some call uh, pumpkin. <laughs> Whatever language that you read. This sign of love, right? <laughs> Subhanallah. And then, and sister for husband, husband need only one letter. They call A, respect. Because Allah put men to be what? To be leader at home. To be in charge. The provider, the protector. Right? What the boss need? To be respected. So therefore, in the hadith said, the birds in the sky, the fish in the ocean, they pray for a woman who respect her husband, Allah. Sisters, how many birds, how many fish, they pray for you? <laughs> so therefore, why? Rasulullah said, what Rasulullah said? Baiti, what? Jannati, my home is my jannah. What did he have? Not even furniture, because of Khadija. Allah, Khadija Allah make sure when Rasulullah come home, she's ready and Allah smiling. So sisters, make sure when your husband come home, Allah smiling. Hi honey. Right? Sorry, because some woman, when the husband come home, it become, you know, FBI. Yeah, what time is it? Why come late? <laughs> right? So therefore, one day Rasulullah before they entered the house, Jibril came. Yeah, Muhammad. Look, Khadija ready for me. And tell her, As-salam, you can hear salam Allah, from seven heaven, say salam for Khadija. Why? Because Khadija can make, you know, the home like Jannah. Rasulullah have problem outside. As soon as he come home, just look at the Khadija face, everything is gone. That's the function of Khadija, right? So now, when you marry, inshallah, you have children, and many of you have children. So how to be together? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Ibran is about the family of Imran. They call Surah what? Al-Imran. He didn't say Surah Al-Ibrahim, Al-Nuh. Right? Because Ibrahim had problem with his father. Nuh with his son. But Imran, the grandfather, grandmother, right? The children and the grandchildren, they are successful. And also, if Ibrahim, oh man, they are prophet. Right? So, Imran, wife, is not prophet. Right? In the Qalat Imra'at Imran, Rabbi inni nadartu laka ma fi batni muharrara. Allah, when she's pregnant, she made an oath. Allah, I want the one that is in my stomach to give to you. I had to serve you, subhanAllah. The baby before born yet, she only had dream, had vision. On that time, her vision is to, his, to have a boy and to become mujahid. You know, to set free Jerusalem from Roman. That was her dream. But when the baby born was, was girl, did he get mad? No. She accepted. So she's brother, sister, whatever Allah give you, boy or girls, accept. We don't know which one will benefit you. Right? Yeah. So we will continue. I, alhamdulillah, I've been married and Allah blessed me with a twin after 14 years, Mary. Boy and girl. Mubashir and Mawadda. When I told my American friend, oh, you did buy, buy one, get one free. <laughs> yeah, subhanallah. So, and then, Maryam, and I give her name, what? Maryam. What's Maryam mean? Maryam mean al abida So be careful, yeah? The way you give name of your children, that means what? That's what your dream. If you give your son Michael Jackson, what do you mean? What's your dream? <laughs> right? Maryam Abida. Wa inni u'idhuha wa duryata min ash-shaytanir rajeeb. And then she make dua. Allah, please protect, you know, 
to protect her from the shaitan. Every baby born always crying. Did you hear baby born and say, I'm here? <laughs> no one read. Always crying. But because shaitan hid from that guy. Only Maryam. Maryam did not cry. Allah accept her dua. So, what's number one? She have a vision, right? But number two, give a good name. But number three, dua. Is that enough? No. Maybe, alhamdulillah, you know, you brought them up at home. You have good atmosphere to teach them. But you put them in the wrong school. Destroy everything. وَكَفَّلَهَا زَكَرِيَّا Allah. She gave her into the good hand. Zakaria. From that came out who? Isa. She wanted Mujahid, right? Allah give more. Not only Mujahid, what? A prophet, Isa. So sometimes you ask Allah something, Allah give you double. Yeah. So, now, how, how to teach our children? Number one, we have to teach from the early the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So this is very important from the beginning when they are very young. Because Al-Hasan, Robert Grand Grand Juden, he was six years old. One day he, he crying, why, why are you crying? Mommy, I'm, I'm, I'm scared. Allah going to put me in the hellfire. I said, no, no children go to hellfire. You know, if every children died, the Hindu children, Christian, they will go to Jannah, right? And I said, yeah, because you, when you cook something, the first you put the small wood <laughs> and then the big one, it's very small one. So but the question, how this boy, this six years old, have this kind of awareness, right? Rabbi Hadawiya, when he was eight years old, he was eating together. When she going to put a morsel, his mouth is stopped. I said, Dad, if this morsel from haram, right, you cannot handle the hellfire. And the father is so heavy. I said, Rabia, what happened if he cannot find food except from haram? I said, Dad, inshallah, we'll be patient here. We'll be suffering, hunger and all, but we cannot handle the fire, hellfire. Yeah? So therefore, I would like to tell a story. In, uh, in Malaysia, there's a, a sister, she have only one boy, and her husband passed away. Every time she give everything to her boy, she said, it's from Allah, right? He, she bought shoes from Allah. Even balloon is from Allah. Even one day, mommy, I want to see Allah. <laughs> Inshallah in Jannah. So, and then when he, he, when he going to eat, he said, ask Allah for the food. Ya Allah, give me food. So one day, she had to go somewhere, and the way back, there was traffic. So when she was late, oh man, this my, my son has come home now. I don't cook yet. And then when it, it, she came, it was late. But she found her son was eating on the table. The first question was, did you pray? I did, mom. Who brought your food? Mommy, you told me from Allah. <laughs> she cried, said, Wallahi, nobody brought the food. Right? Kullama dakhala alayha zakari al-mihrab wajada indaha risqa. Every time Maryam enter, uh, Zakaria enter her chamber, the mihrab of Maryam, she found what? Food. Ya Maryam, anna laki hadha. Maryam, who brought the food? Wawalatuwa min indillah. It's from Allah. Maryam, prophet? No. Like Allah gives to Maryam, Allah can give to the boy. <laughs> Subhanallah. Yeah? There's a sheikh in Saudi Arabia. He prayed Juma in Masjid Haram. So, on the way back, to Jeddah, there was Adhan Asar. He looked around and he couldn't find a masjid. And suddenly he saw 
like masjid mahjur you know even the menara already like almost fall down uh, maybe there's nobody there this mah nobody pray there but he saw a car I should be somebody so he exit and then he went inside the masjid he saw a young boy alone who was reading Quran He said, Assalamu alaikum, uh, she, He was like, strange, why you come here? There's no masjid, no function anymore. He said, son, did you pray? Asar, not yet. Let me pray. Okay. So he closed the Quran, and then he called Adhan, and then pray. When the sheikh going to say, Allahu Akbar, say what, what his friend. Allahu Akbar, the boy said, Alhamdulillah, jama'ah aydan. Thank Allah, there is jama'ah too. Imagine you are imam, somebody behind you said it. So after finish, son, you know, to whom you talk? As a sheikh, if I tell you, you will think I'm crazy. I was talking to the masjid, to the wall. Right? What? Yeah, he's crazy. <laughs> Look, sheikh, my father, Allah Yarhamu, used to bring me to different masjid. Among them, this masjid. And this masjid, nobody pray now because they have a new masjid. So I felt that this masjid should be missed people used to come here. So sometimes, you know, one, twice a week, once a month, I came here just to remove the loneliness of the, of the masjid. The sheikh said, mashallah, you know. And you know, you know, sheikh, every time before I leave, I used to make dua. And I, Allah, if I'm able by reading Quran here, by praying here, to remove the loneliness of this masjid, please remove the loneliness of my father in the grave. And the sheikh was crying, inshallah. He said, how lucky the father. <laughs> That means this boy, everything he did good do, he, 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 he did good deed, he always what? Want to send to the fathers. Right? So therefore, the best investment what? To have the, yeah. So, you know, make your children from the beginning for the early, they know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They fall in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second one is also to install the Arabic called Husnul Huluk, good akhlaq. Because sometimes you have children, he is half with everything. But they come to masjid, no akhlaq. They talk the root. Right? Akhlaq is very important. All the goal of ibadah what? to produce a Muslim, they have good akhlaq. Rasulullah SAW was asked, Ya Rasulullah, what is the easiest ibadah? Anybody can tell me? Your husnul khuluq, good conduct. Ya Rasulullah, you know, what type of deed will bring most people into Jannah? What is it? Taqwa Allah wa husnul khuluq, a good conduct. Ya Rasulullah, on the judgment, our good deed, bad deed will put in the scale. What type of deed will make my scale heavier? What is it? Hustul khuluk. Allah. Ya Rasulullah, on the judgment, who will be closest to you? What is it? Ahsanukum khuluko. The one, the best among you. The best in akhlaq. Subhanallah. Right? So teach our children the adab. Adab with the parent, adab with the... And if you know, I'm from Indonesia, how Islam spread in Indonesia? By akhlaq. Most of them, they are marching. You know? But Indonesian was, was amazed. You know, my father taught me the many type of story how this marching come to Indonesia. You know, before in the, uh, the Muslim from Hadramaut, from Yemen, there's Portuguese, there's Holland, You know, if you let pay something, you know, you have debt and you let pay, you have to have interest. I said, no interest, right? Temple Salat, they leave all the merchandise that they go to pray, right? They're so nice, yeah? That's the last one. And uh, the, the last one is istiqamah. This team have to be what? Istiqamah. So therefore, why? What the most dua Rasulullah repeated? Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qalbi ala dini. Oh Allah, the one who turned the heart peace. 
So therefore he said, never judge people until you see how he died. In Egypt, a sheikh, uh, one of the sheikhs told the story. There is a, a, ma a mother, she has surgery, but alhamdulillah was successful. And her daughter took her, put her on the wheelchair and pushed her, and then she stopped. I said, mommy, wait here. I'm going to go to the cashier to pay. While he was in the wheelchair, I think she was in Sakaratul Maut. Alhamdulillah, three Egyptians was there. Ay, yakhi, in Sakaratul Maut. So both three of them said, Ya mama, kul, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. He said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And she died. So the girl came. He said, What happened with my mother? He said, Inna lillahi wa inna rajiun. But don't worry, she says shahada. What? Kafar tumuha. She was Christian. So, <laughs> so you make her kafir. <laughs> she was Christian. Subhanallah. The last minute. 70 years she worshiping Jesus. Shirik. But look at the end of her life. Nobody knew. Right? One of the uh, Egyptian journalists tried to find out how Allah honored her with this. So we have something. You know something Allah SWT give you something because you did something that nobody know. They found out that this were lady, even she's Christian, but every Friday, she used to make like a food, put in the box, a 500 box, and give to people who pray, pray for Jum'ah. Yes. And that's now, now become habit in Indonesia. <laughs> you, you go to Indonesia on, on Friday, you don't need to cook. <laughs> People will provide because they remember the story of this lady. Allah give you. Right? My, my teacher, Sheikh Muhammad Sha'rawi, you know, he was very, very famous. You know, when he broadcast the tafsir, all the Gulf country, they listening to his tafsir. We, when I was student, Look like you, you watch like a movie, like eight o'clock. Hey, come on, come on. Sheikh Sharawi. We was everybody student was because he was very eloquent. You know, sometimes you see somebody give lecture, all certain people can understand. But Sheikh Sharawi, you are alim, you are jahil, you are ignorant, you are alim. You can understand. You can enjoy, it. right? So when he die, you can see in YouTube that he loved Rasulullah SAW. Everything he taught Rasulullah. He always cries up there. So when he died, he said, Ashhadu Allah ilallah wa annaka Rasulullah wa annaka. He said, you Rasulullah. Because in Hadith, when you die, and you are, you are a good Muslim, they will be welcomed by who? By the Prophet. Right? Uh, Subhanallah. So therefore, why you always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma ina saluka husnal khatiba. Yeah. So that's, I think, uh, just a few tips, right? How to be together in Jannah. Make sure you have a peaceful family. Let your children, the best gift you can to children is you have peaceful family. Right? So don't, don't let the children see you are fighting. Even if, if you have to fight, just go to room. Not in front of them. Don't yell, it's very good. Right? And then the second one, you all have to be concerned about the next life. Because a sheikh would just read today. Ya alladhina amanu ku anfusakum wa ahlikum narum. Protect yourself, your family. So in that mean, maybe the parent is a good parent. They come to masjid. Right? But before they enter Jannah, he heard somebody call him. Ya Allah, don't let him go to Jannah. When they look at his children, maybe his wife too. I close you, I brought you up, I pay you with decision. Yeah, done. But you only think about my education, my body. You don't care I wake up for Fajr or not. 
I pray or not. <laughs> right? That's in the Quran. Right? Inna min azwajikum wa auladikum adu. Sometimes your children, your wife will become the enemy. That's on the day judgment. Yeah? So, how? Because our children all not always with, with you. So I mentioned in the beginning, they have to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the beginning. You know how Yusuf able to stay, right? Because before he leave, his father was already installed in mind about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when he come out, so the children, you think will be what in, in, in the university and everywhere, they are alone with you. Know? But if you already install with them, you know, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah will be this diploma, right? And the last one is to make sure not only you teach them about Quran, become hafid, but also have good akhlaq. Right? Yeah. So, I want to close because the Ramadan is coming. Right? And the question is, why we need Ramadan? Why we need Ramadan? And what's the goal of Ramadan? La'allakum tattaqun To make you the one who have taqwa. Why taqwa? Because taqwa is boarding pass into Jannah, right? Always in Quran said, Innal muttaqina fi jannati wa uyun. Right? Always in the Quran, when Allah said, who enter Jannah? Always what? Taqwa. Right? So why fasting? Right? Who among the people here, how old are you Muslim? Just 40, right? If you're 40 years old, right? And every day you sleep eight hours, that means how many, how many years do you spend for just sleep? 20 years. 20 years only for what? Sleep. So now, how much year you spend for ibadah? If you pray just five minutes every day. Just for 10 years, right? 10 years, how many of your salat, your ibadah that really ikhlas, sincere? Huh? Just for five years, subhanAllah. So you 40 years, you only hold five years that for ibadah. And we know also this five years, is right? Can you make it? Impossible. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with his rahmah, he gives you a gift. That's what? Ramadan. So Ramadan, because number one, two, two reasons Ramadan. Number one, Ramadan, everything is easy, right? You know, Ramadan, very interesting. So they were said, Ya yuhalladhina amanu kutiba alaykum usiyam. You know the word ya in Arabic? is the use to what to call somebody ya ali ya muhammad but ya to call somebody who are near to you who are middle or far away right you can say ya abdul majid ya ya umar right yeah it mean allah subhanahu wa said hey oh you believe your iman is very low middle or oh, oh you are super imam iman come i will i'll call you so therefore, why in the beginning of Ramadan, everybody become good Muslim, right? The masjid is full. Look at the first day of Taraweh. <laughs> right? Masjid is full. But who able to be istiqamah until the end? Because after one week, they go down, right? Yeah. So number two, everything you do in Ramadan, what? Will be what? Multiply the reward. Alif, Lam, Mim. How long, how much you get? 30, right? In Ramadan, Allah multiplies to 70. Right? So inshallah, so, it, so you have thing you can bring into Jannah because of Ramadan. So therefore why Talha, he had a dream. A two Sahaba from Ansar, they become Muslim in the same time. They do jihad at the same time. But one of them died in battle, that means Shaheed. Second one died on his bed after one year. And he had dream the day judgment happened, and Allah called who? The one who died on his bed, not the Shaheed. We know the word of Shaheed, right? 
Huh? When he woke up, he told his companion, he said, are you sure? He said, yeah. Let's go to Rasulullah. So he went to Rasulullah. Rasulullah said, why are you amazed? Isn't the second one who died on his bed, he have extra Ramadan. Allah. <laughs> extra Ramadan. They ended. Subhanallah. So therefore, Rasulullah one day he, he claimed the member, right? And one of the hadith said, Rogima an furojulin. Man adroka Ramadan, falam yukfan laha. That means the loser, Allah gives him opportunity to, to, to be alive in Ramadan, but he's still unforgiven. That's the loser. 30 years, sorry, 30 days, that's not enough. <laughs> I want to close because the reward of Ramadan always won. What's that? What's the reward of Ramadan? Forgiveness, right? Because in, in order to enter Jannah, what? Wasari'u ila magfiratin min rabbikum and then what? Wa Jannah. The magfirat of us. Yeah. I want you to repeat after me now. The hadith. Say after me. Man soma. Say. Ramadana. Imanan. Wahtisaban. Ghufira. Ma taqaddama. Min dambi. Whoever fast, man, woman, old man, young man, right? So much fasting. Ramadan, iman, and based on e, iman. That means only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wahtisaban, expecting reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ihtisaban also, while you fasting, you do muhasaba. You refuse. Remember all your sin. Allah will forgive all the sin. Can you imagine that? Fasting one day. That means if you die, khalas. But might be your fasting is not very good. Allah give another opportunity. Take it after me, inshallah. Man qawma, ramadana, imanan, wahtisaban, ghufira, ma taqaddama, min dambihi. The same, but chan the beginner. The first one, soma, second what? Qawma. That means taraweeh, qiyamul layl. Allah. If you do qiyamul layl, 30 days, right? And you die, what? All your sin forgiven. Allah. Oh man, my fasting, that away something I miss. Still have another opportunity. Right? Man qawma laylatul qadr. Allah. And you spend the last time of Ramadan. Imanan wahti saban. Gufiru ma taqaddam in dambi. All the sin is forgiven. Right? So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give opportunity. So therefore why don't forget? From now on, every time after salat, you ask Allah what? Allahumma balikna Ramadan. Allahumma balikna Ramadan. Yeah? Yeah. So inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, bring us together inshallah with our family, you know, in dunya also, in Jannah inshallah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us long life and good health, and we can observe Ramadan itself perfectly, inshallah. Amen, inshallah. Huh? Hey, we have any question, right? Before I tell the second one, I want to ask you a question. You know, before Rasulullah entered Medina, everybody was so happy to welcome Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the children, the woman, right? You can see you. On that time, there's no Instagram, no Facebook. Nobody see Muhammad Wasallam. How the people of Marina, they fall in love in Muhammad, they didn't see him. Anybody can answer? Because of his ambassador, Mus'ab bin Umar. Allah. Mus'ab bin Umar. Before Rasulullah came, almost pure Medina become Muslim. So according to people of Medina, if this his ambassador, like this, his akhlaq, his wasalam, imagine the one who sent him. <laughs> so we have to be like oh, 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 Musa bin Umar. When non-Muslims see you, I want to be like that. There's a, there's a, a girl from Russia. She called me, she would like to take shahada. So I asked her, you know what, why you make it interesting in Islam? She said, because my friend family, 
So she studied study in, in UW, you know. Something like on the weekend, her friend from Pakistan, they have a good family, used to ask her to stay with her, you know, for one day today. And she saw the family of this Pakistani family very good. He said, I don't have this family. My, my, my father abused it. You know, my mother addicted. You know, this is the family. <laughs> right? The second one, what is the, the problem that our youth, they're facing now? He said that spiritually weak and intellectually weak. The iman is weak. Right? So it's very easy to know. And they're intellectually also weak. You know, look at us, the children who come for Sunday school. Why are you here? My mom, my dad. <laughs> It's not happy. <laughs> Because for them, Islam like a burden. Uh, the only time coming because of mother. Because we, we don't put that love in them. You know, before I talk that story. So there, there is a... Uh, you know, in, in Baltimore, the school called Al Huda School, right? Al Huda School. There is a, there is a student by name Ayub. He's good looking. He's from Pakistan. So when he was in library, there is a woman by name Angela. Angela, she just graduated, and because Ayub is handsome, so she tried to seduce him. But I have said, I'm sorry, there's no dating in Islam. What? How you get married? <laughs> so anyway, but Alhamdulillah Ayyub, he not only have good iman, also, you know, he, he equipped with Islamic knowledge. He knows a little bit about the Bible. I said, Angela, you know, this is not God. I said, what? That's in the Bible. He said, I pray to my father in the heaven. My father greater than me. Without him, I cannot do nothing. And then one day said, you know, Angela, you're not supposed to eat pork. I said, why? That's in, in the book of Corinthians. She opened the Bible, yes. Pork is haram too. You know, you're supposed to wear hijab. I said, why? It's in the Bible. <laughs> she read it, he said, yeah. So now she stopped eating pork and she wearing hijab. So her mother was, Angela, are you Muslim? No, ma'am, I'm a good Christian. And she worried, so she took her to the church, you know, to ask the, the priest to advise her. I said, Angela, I heard from your mom that you don't eat pork anymore. Yes, sir. I follow the Bible. Why are you wearing this scarf? Sir, it's in the Bible. Oh, Angela, you don't understand Bible, you know. <laughs> Something like that. This is for that time. So Angela said, I hate to go to church anymore. This is hypocrite. No, Ayub is a good boy. He said to his mom, mom, you know, I met a beautiful girl. She's American. But we talk about religion, but I'm worried. What I have to do? He said, look, I want to see her. Why don't you invite her for your graduation? That's good. So she came for Ayub graduation. So in the middle, the time for Salat Asar. So everybody went to the hall to pray. So Angela, he came with her sister. He's, he's still there. A Muslim brother who came late, when he saw two sisters, hey sister, you're not supposed to be, this time for salat. Angela says, salat is good food. <laughs> I'm hungry too. <laughs> she taught them to eat salat, no? <laughs> so anyway, she went to the hall and see if you pray. But anyway, in the end, Angela became Muslim. And she married with Ayub brother. You know, because they're older than I do. And I think they have a girl, no, her name Asma. Right? The question to you, how she become Muslim? Because of Ayub, we said, there is no dating in Islam. That's what, in the beginning. So how many parents can, can produce a children like Ayub? They equip intellectually and what? Spiritually, right? You know, I want to close, how many times I want to close? <laughs> the story uh, from one of the sheikh, he said there is a, a boy 
he was homeschooling his hafid. But when he went to 11th grade, he said, Dad, I want to go to public school. What? Public school, what's going to happen with your heaven? He said, look at this. Dad, Allah gave me a gift. I want to share with the other. So according to this boy, Islam is a gift. I want to share. Okay, yes, sir. So he went to high school for two years. When he graduated, he said 14 of American boys become Muslim. Because he saw in this man is different. He used to pray on the fleet. He didn't have gold friend. <laughs> he raised the call. Subhanallah. Yeah. So we ask Allah SWT to protect our children. We ask Allah SWT to make them among the salihin and qualitin and faizin, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, hamdun ya fin ya muka fi mazid ya rabbana laka alhamdul. Kama yan bagir jalawatika wa adini sultanik. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala sinna Muhammad wa ala ala sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma anfa'na bima alamtana wa kina adab al-nar. Allahumma barik lana fi awladina wa wafikum ila ta'atik. Wa arzukna birrahum. Allahumma ja'alhum minas salihin, al-qanitin, al-sadiqin. Al-Hafidina li kitabillah. Wa tiba'i sunnati Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma ya qawiyu ya matin. Ya qawiyu ya matin ya dhal jalal wa ikram. Allahumma ya munjil al-kitab. Wa ya mudhi al-sahab. Wa ya hazim al-ahzab. Ihzim ahada'ika min al-suhayina. Al-mujrimin al-washimin. الذين يقتلون أطفال المسلمين ونسائهم اللهم هزمهم وزلزلهم اللهم خذهم أخذ عزيز مقتدر اللهم اقتلهم بددا ولا تغر منه أحدا يا أرحم الرحمين ليس لأهل غزة مؤينا سواك اللهم كن أونا لهم اللهم اسفي مرضهم وارحم موتهم اللهم افتح لهم فتحا مبينا وانسلهم نصرا عزيزا اللهم احينا على الإسلام والسنة وطوفنا على الإيمان والتوبة ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذب النار ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميم العليم وتب علينا إنك التواب الرحيم وصلى الله وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين وإياك سبيل